Mr. Bali High is flaking off all over me oh, because no, I the washed it. Aloha, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. We have another guest for us this week, but first I wanna talk real quick about this guy right here. The Bali High, have you been to the Bali High? The Bali High is in Shelter Island in San Diego. The first time I ever went there, I was just enamored with the vastness of the art. It's a two-story building on Shelter Island. The It's like a 360 degree view of the ocean almost. Mm, maybe not 360, but like, 200 degree view of the ocean, all kinds of carvings. Of course, when you arrive at the Bali High, you're greeted by this dude. There are all kinds of famous photos of him with actors and comedians and pinup models and all kinds of stuff. Tom Ham bought a bar called Christian's Hut on Shelter Island in San Diego in 1953. In 1954, he turned it into the Bali High. Now, the interesting thing that we should probably mention is that there's this caricature up on the roof called the Goof. And the goof was left over, they say, from Christian's Hut. We need to back up in time, and in Newport Beach, there was a bar called Christian's Hut. Now we gotta back up even more in time. Christian's Hut came from the filming of a movie called Mutiny on the Bounty with Clark Gable. It was filmed on Catalina. In order to keep everybody in the crew happy, Clark Gable said, hey, we gotta build a bar for all the cast and crew under his apartment. So they named it Christian's Hut after the lead character, Fletcher Christian, who Clark Gable portrayed. For the movie on Catalina, they built a whole Polynesian village. It was like a whole thing. And then so once the, the filming wrapped, they moved that bar. And actually, I think Ray Buen from the Tiki T worked at that bar. I think it was Hollywood had, had pulled him out there and said, hey man, you need to make us some tropical cocktails while we're on this tropical island of Catalina. Back to the Bali High. So the Bali High is so interesting to me because there are thousands and thousands of Polynesian artifacts within this restaurant. There's this incredible 3D map that shows where certain figures came from. So there would be a statue of like this guy right here on Hawaii. And then there would be a Cook Island dude next to the Cook Islands. Super creative, super cool. The Bali High is also famous for serving over two million Mai Tais. Now the Mai Tais they served at the beginning of the place, I think are much different than they are now. The cocktails now are, um, the cocktails now got caught up in the Tiki de Evolution phase. The reason that I wanna talk about all of this with the Bali High is because I wanna enforce how important theming is. And my guest tonight, is a themer, a themer. She is an Imagineer from Disney. I would love to bring on my good friend, Miss Linda Jean. Hi. Hi, Linda. Thank you for joining us on uh, Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Thanks for having me, I'm excited. Yeah, totally. Linda and I first met when she came to a Hula Girls show. It was a Hula Girls show and a Tiki Marketplace. Mm -hmm. It was lovely to meet you. And then we shot some photos today. Yeah, that was nice. So how important do you think theming is to like a good Tiki bar? Oh, theming is everything. I, I'm a set decorator, so we'll start there. That's mm -hmm. my title. And theming is everything because it tells the story of where you are environmentally. It's about escapism. Yeah. And when you go through the doors of a tiki bar, a lot of times when you go into a vintage tiki bar, you would go over a bridge. And the bridge was supposed to be the metaphorical transferring from normal life ah. to Polynesia. Learn something new every day. I'd like to thank Mr. Sven Kirsten for uh, educating me on that point. All right, well, so have you been to the Bali High? No, I've never been to Bali High. I want to. Yeah, I think you would, I think you'd love it. It's two stories, it's expansive, tons of art. The cocktails have been known to be very, very potent. Strong. <laughs> yeah. I like to taste my rum in a cocktail. Well, <laughs> I would say that the classic cocktails that came out of the Bali High were very balanced and incredible. I think when you go to the Bali High now, you get something that is very flammable. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If you go there and you have one cocktail, you'll probably be okay. Don't go there expecting some kind of craft cocktail experience. I just don't think they're making the way they used to. Okay. So they're not like super fruity, don't expect to be having a pina colada there kind of thing, right? I'm sure they serve a pina colada, but their specialties are more like taste the rum. You think? Taste all of the rum, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. The food there's incredible. The view is incredible. I would, I would urge everybody to go to the Bali High because it is really, it's one of the last remaining tiki temples. And like I always say, once these places are gone, they're never going to build something yeah. this big again. There were 15 different types of wood that were used in the building of the Bali High. Wow. 
Were they like imported from like an island or something special? No, just maybe. Just yeah. I don't know. Oh, wait, have you had a Mr. Bali High before? No, I've never had a Mr. Bali High, so I'm excited. I think I've only had maybe one or two in my life, so I'm excited to have another one too with you. And uh, for this drink, we will be using lemons, pineapple juice, simple syrup, Kahlua. A light rum, and we're gonna be using Ed Hamilton's White Stash. Dark Jamaican rum, we're gonna be using the Hamilton Jamaican Pot Still Black Rum. All right, so let's jump into the cocktail. Let's start with cutting that lemon in half. And I have a white ceramic knife. Ooh. Oh my goodness, I have to get one of these. Yeah, it's a good knife, right? Oh yeah. I know, the barbecue guy was like, this thing sucks. Nice. Okay, so for this cocktail, we're gonna need one ounce of lemon juice per cocktail. So you wanna use this thing? No, I brought my own. <laughs> brought your own. This is my favorite thing. The Juice King. The Juice King. I love using it, especially when you're making multiple cocktails and it's just kind of easy to... I'll show you. So you just... And it does all the work for you. Oh, wow. With a little bit of... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do like it a lot better than doing a hand squeeze because I got little, little lady hands and... This kind of does the muscle for you. Little lady hand. And so you, you use this a lot at home, huh? Yeah, anytime we're making the, usually I have it facing me, but I was trying to show it for the camera, mm. that's better. <laughs> but yeah, especially when we're making multiple drinks or friends or whatever, it's just, it's so easy. Okay, so once you juice it, then what do you do? Yeah, I'll have the juice right here. There it is. Perfect. Okay, there are two ounces of lemon juice there. We're gonna do the pineapple juice next. And as you can see, it's very important to, to shake the dull stuff. One and a half ounces of pineapple juice each half. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's one and a half. Okay. Here's another one and a half. For the next ingredient, we're gonna be doing simple syrup. So we're gonna need half an ounce of simple syrup per cocktail, so one ounce of simple syrup. One ounce total, okay. Yep, yeah, this is just one part water to one part sugar mixed together. What kind of sugar do you use for your syrup? Do you use Demerara or like just regular? Well, Demerara syrup's a different syrup. Oh, got it. Yeah. This is just your regular run-of-the-mill simple syrup. Yeah. yeah, just like pure cane white sugar. Yeah. Three quarters of an ounce per cocktail, so one and a half ounces. Got it. Thanks for doing that math for me. <laughs> yeah. That was really hard for me right. when I first started making drinks, like two, three quarters. Yeah, I'd, I'd have I'm to like, do this because I was like, Okay, there's one dollar, like four quarters, one dollar. Oh, is that what you do? And then oh. 50 cents. <laughs> so dumb. Ooh, look at the changing color. Mm -hmm. So mm. that's the Kahlua. Right, okay, we're gonna do the light rum next. It's gonna be one ounce of rum per cocktail, so. Two ounce total. I can do math. <laughs> so quick math there. Right. Yes, I have two ounces. One and a half ounces of the dark Jamaican rum. One and a half ounces each. What do you think about corks? I like the pop. <laughs> that's that's my favorite thing when you get a new bottle of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? I like corks. Good. I like them better than the twisties. Glad to have you on the show. <laughs> Another one and a half ounces. This is getting very full. Yeah. And also, you said you wanted to smell this, right? Oh yes. I you know, have you ever tried it. Hamilton rums at all? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have Hamilton rums. And my, my husband's the one that knows which rum, but I see Hamilton a lot. <laughs> yeah. Wait, smell right. it first. Oh. What does that smell? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I know what you mean about the funk. It's a little bit funky, but it's, like a good funk. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. I don't even know how to describe it. There's just something in there that like is completely new to me. Something in there. Normally a drink this big, you'd probably want to split it up into two for shaking. But uh, since we have Linda here and she looks very strong. <laughs> You're gonna make me do it? We're gonna make her do it. Okay. I'm really sorry if I spill it all over here and we have to start over. <laughs> I promise I will not. That would be a gigantic bummer. No, okay. Okay, so we're gonna pour this all into the shaker. Mm. Of course, we're using purified ice from Sonic. It is the great pebble ice that everybody oh, yeah. loves. All right, so, I got the right sleeves for it. <laughs> yeah, you do. So horizontal. Okay. More horizontal. Yeah, there you go. You feel like a little dance with it. All right, we're getting a little frosty. One mm -hmm. more. So I'm not trying to kill you. Thank you. All right, there you go. Okay, wow, <laughs> smell that. Ooh, that's very pineapple-y. 
Very pineapple-y. This is the vintage Mr. Bali High mug. You can tell it's a vintage one because the bottom is concave. They did tons of different versions of them. Don't put these in your dishwasher. If you put them in the dishwasher, they will look like that. I just learned that moments ago. Hard lesson learned. This is a vintage one. Half of his tusk is missing, but we're gonna keep the perfect old one over here. We're gonna drink out of this one. Well, I have another one for you too. Even though it has a two straw hole on the top, she is married. We're not gonna uh, be drinking out of this. Like, like an old fashioned milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> like an old fashioned milkshake. So why don't you grab, yeah. I got a little smaller, huh, over the years? Looks like they got a little smaller over the years. Tiny bit. This is a modern one from, I think, Tiki Farm, maybe? But he was perfect until I washed him also. So for God's sakes, keep these things out of the dishwasher. Let's see if I can try to get these things to be equal-ish. It's kind of hard to tell. Okay, and then of course you're gonna top them off with ice. And this is so important. People sometimes don't put enough ice into cocktails, but Especially with tiki drinks, you really want to fill them all the way up with ice. Not just because you want it cold, but for the bright dilution. Ooh. <laughs> Look at her. Yeah. I know all about cocktails. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, that's totally correct. Part of the ingredients is water. So when you add ice, especially this small pebble ice, it's going to melt quicker. And so then you're going to add water to the drink. Okay. And no garnish? Because the head is the garnish. <laughs> yeah, no garnish because the head is the garnish. And so from the 1960s, this is the Mr. Bali High. Cheers. <laughs> oh. I don't think we want to cheers the, the heads, right? Oh yeah, we don't want to bonk the heads into each other. <laughs> oh, ooh, it kind of changes a little bit after. It changes. Yeah, it's the funk. First, pineapple. Yeah. Then then the funk of, of the black rum comes out. Right. And it just keeps coming. <laughs> I kind of got the pineapple, then chocolate, mm. and then the rum. Now that you said chocolate, I get it. Yep. It's like a warmth of the chocolate, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, mm. you're way more articulate about the, the cocktail thing. I love than smelling. Than McBiff is. <laughs> I love smelling a good bottle and, and trying to figure out what, what you're getting in there. Oh. And right. this one, I, I just, I could not describe it. It's just, yeah. it's funk. an interesting, good, warm funk. <laughs> That sounds really unappetizing, I'm sorry. Good warm funk. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. All right, so you work in Glendale. Glendale is home to... Walt Disney Imagineering. And Damon's. What is Damon's? Oh that sounds no! Like, it sounds familiar, I feel like I should know this. What is this? There's a tiki bar in Glendale called Damon's. Oh my God, how did I miss it? I grew up in Glendale too. I mean, I wasn't going to tiki bars as a kid, but yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow, I need to go there now. It's huh. super old. I'm shocked. I've never seen it. They have an incredible collection of orchids of Hawaii lamps. Ooh. Yeah, really good. So there's an incredible legacy of creators that were involved at Walt Disney Imagineering. Like Rolly Crump, who, in, who invented or designed, I guess, the, the Tiki Room. Mm. And Bob Gurr, who invented or designed the monorail and a lot of the ride cars. Mm -hmm. There are a few prominent women from the era of Imagineering, mm -hmm. right? Like Mary Blair. Mary Blair. The Irvines. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I work with one of them now, Allie. And... Oh yeah, I think I've seen her on the show, the Imagineering show. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I think awesome. So. Yeah. I'll have to look. So, what does it mean to you to be part of that legacy? Oh my goodness. That's is a it a big, big is it a big deal to you, or is it just yeah, a job? Yeah. No, it it is, and and I sometimes forget what a big part of everybody's lives Disney is, and how lucky I am mm -hmm. to to be part of that and we always call it creating the magic but it really is like mm -hmm. as a kid you go to Disneyland and it's just magic and to be part of creating any kind of that in, in theming and you know storytelling like what we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. creating this environment of where you can just immerse yourself in a story and, I, and I've always loved doing that too as a kid my room was always themed something it was, oh, like, really? it was Pocahontas and it was Tarzan and I literally made paper vines because I <laughs> wanted to be in a jungle all the time yeah me too I'm just kind of lucky that I ended up in the spot that I am um, set decorating at Disney Imagineering and getting to work in multiple parks and yeah I love it is there anything notable that you have worked on that we would know about uh, yeah <laughs> let's see okay. well okay my first 
ever project was um, the Explorer's Lodge, Hong Kong Explorer's Lodge. Oh. I feel like my Tiki people would really love the Explorer's Lodge. You have to take the trip to Hong Kong and go. And um, uh, where? Chi wait, China? Hong Kong, yeah. China. It's an Explorer's Lodge, so it's just everything explore, and it, mm -hmm. it specifically touches on like the 1940s and before. So this is my only taste of tiki decorating that I've ever done is oh, the Explorer's really? Lodge because it um, was kind of separated into different wings and one of the wings was Polynesia. We, I want to work on that. I loved it. I learned so much about different tribes and all the you know different masks and, and the artwork that these tribes make fit and mm -hmm. telling the difference between I, this was five years ago. I don't remember it all off the top of my head, but I learned a lot. <laughs> but I think that's the, one of the cool things about Tiki that people don't really understand mm -hmm. is that we end up learning a lot about ancient cultures mm -hmm. and Polynesian cultures. And it, it's it's been a big education, a cool byproduct that comes out of Tiki mm -hmm. beyond just cocktails and Hawaiian shirts. Definitely. Masks were so important to them. And what I liked about the Hong Kong Explorers Lodge also is we didn't just hang them up as plain decor, but we also had little plaques mm -hmm. that said exactly where this mask was from, if it was a ceremonial mask, if it was... They do have different purposes. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that there's... I have so much art in the breezeway. And I know where a lot of it's from, but I would love to know more about that stuff. But a lot of like the Sepik region stuff, there isn't a, a ton of history about it. Mm -hmm. or, Papua New Guinea stuff too. I love the Papua New Guinea stuff. That's my favorite stuff, yeah. My my love for Papua New Guinea grew from um, actually procuring some of the items for the Hong Kong Explorers Lodge with my coworkers and we actually had um, a person, her name was Leslie, and she was so cool. She actually lives in Papua New Guinea. Oh wow. Yeah, and she lives among the tribes and she helps procure these and so it's, it's all very authentic. She works with them. They, you know, will say, oh, we need some masks or some shields or something to fill a certain wall space and, and they'll send us back pictures and and Le Leslie's kind of our interpreter and mm -hmm. she actually speaks their language and everything. And so it was just cool. I just love how authentic it was. And I, you have to go to the Explorer's Lodge if you ever get the chance in Hong Kong. And that in turn gives that those tribes money too because yeah, you're supporting definitely. the tribes by buying their art. I think that's great. Yeah, people think that we make everything in our shops. Like we're just like little little Christmas elves <laughs> like making all of our little props. Yeah. But really we we do, we, we buy off authentic things mm -hmm. and that was something I, I learned coming in, into this. I I really have an appreciation now when I go into the parks and I see, oh my God, that is a real antique radio that they refurbished. Oh, right. This is real, that is real. <laughs> Five years of just kind of projects being crammed in. Mm -hmm. But one of my main ones that I was really happy to be part of was the Guardians of the Galaxy overlay of, of Tower of Terror. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I think a lot of people are gonna be mad at you for I that. I know, I know, <laughs> but... There's, How can you do that? I know. My feeling is there's still a really great Tower of Terror in Florida. And oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So at least it's it's still captured there. I just love the the Twilight Zone theming. Me too. And Rod Serling. And I know. I loved the Twilight Zone. When I first bought this watch, this Ooh, that's cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this watch is from 1957. Uh, I saw Elvis wear it in Blue Hawaii, but also Rod Serling in the Twilight Zone would wear this watch. Really? Now I need to get it. For Elvis and Twilight Zone. <laughs> you stay away from my watch. Yeah. You know what's funny is there were actually some masks in Tower of Terror in the library too. Papua New Guinea masks. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And you might see some some hidden things still lingering from the ghost of Tower of Terror in Guardians. <laughs> oh really? Mm-hmm. You just have to, to look around. Okay. I, I really love what the whole team did with Guardians. That was a fun one. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite ride at Disneyland? Oh, it's a tie between Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion. I like the classics. I do too. I love Pirates. But I love Haunted Mansion. And they're, they're so different, mm -hmm. but they're right next to each they're other. They're so different. I like that Pirates has a little bit of thrill to it too. Like there's a couple the little, little dips. Drops. Yeah, it's like... I love the smell of Pirates. Oh, the smell the is so good. Smell. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard somebody was making candles that, sent, that were scented mm -hmm. like that. I love being transported, but I think everybody who loves Tiki loves that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so many people that love Disney that love Tiki also. Yeah. It's all escapist. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite ride? Oh, man. Have you not been to Disneyland in a long time? You might find this to be a oh. shock, but I haven't been to Disneyland in over a year. 
Oh, oh, that's not that bad. I thought you were gonna be like five years and I was like, oh, no. okay. A year, that's not bad. That was COVID. That was at the start. Yeah, that was pretty much when we shut down. Yeah. Okay, oh God. <laughs> it was funnier in my head. Oh, your favorite ride? Pirates, I guess. Yeah. It's so good. I think, yeah, I think maybe it's Pirates. Mm -hmm. I also really like Indiana Jones, but I, I like it for the yes. for the line, like walking, like mm -hmm. you get a little bit of it, like especially when they're doing the cards. The cards? When you're walking through the line, they would hand out these playing cards. Oh. And they were translator cards, so you could read all of the stuff on the wall. I've never experienced that. What? I wonder if it's because I always take the fast pass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they've done those in years. Okay, you know what? Like, I'm having this weird kind of like memory coming back to me. Do you kind of remember? Something. Like, that sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And she's, I'm gonna have to look that up. Mm -hmm. Now I'm the Imagineer. <laughs> um, when I first started yeah. as an intern, we did this walkthrough of the park at night to, to get to know the behind the scenes aspect of how the rides operate and everything. Mm -hmm. and I remember walking through Indiana Jones. It was sticky in the floor because it's just. You, you know, know, I know. There's there's actually a lot of that, but I'm sure they've cleaned it up. Is it from smoke, like the smoke machines or something? I, I think it's just a lot of things. Like oh. there's like, kind of the grease from from the ride vehicle, yeah. and it's not meant to walk on. It's yeah. meant to ride the ride. Yeah. But yeah. Ew. Indiana Jones is sticky. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it. You just did. No. You totally did. Now everybody in America <laughs> and beyond, Brazil also. Mm hmm. Ooh. I think my favorite ride at Disneyland is Club 33. Oh, have you actually been to Club 33, like in it? <gasps> We've played it three times. Oh my gosh. Oh, you've played it? <gasps> and I've been there for cocktails with McBiff. Oh my gosh, lucky. And I got so drunk there. Really? And then I, I went out and uh, Miss May LaRue, tattoo artist, and I went on Dumbo which is the Dumboist idea to go on after that being drinking. Kind of fun. <laughs> no. No. After like And you're we, stuck on that too. We, <laughs> you know, like, we try to drink every cocktail at Club 33 cuz you don't you don't get that opportunity. Yeah. We spent all day there drinking. Oh my god. And then we go out on the balcony and <laughs> look down on the, upon the people, the 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 commoners. The yeah. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we, we performed there three times. That's so awesome. Summer of Tiki. Mm -hmm. What year was that? Like three, two, three years ago. Oh, that sounds like fun. That's so cool. Should have been there. Yeah, I wish I I wish I wish could get into Club 33. You should have been there. I wish. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to make friends with uh, like a rich person or like a famous person. I think the only way I would get in there is if I was like working on a project in there. Mm. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. Would, would you order this at a, uh, Definitely. a tiki bar? Yeah. Like I said, I like cocktails that that you can really taste the rum in. Mm -hmm. And, and the, this is fun. The Mr. Bali High at the Bali High no longer tastes like this. Really? Yeah. Oh. If I were going to make this for you the way that they make it for you. If they added like mixers or something to save time. I think it's probably just mostly Bacardi. Bacardi oh. and pineapple juice and orange juice and... Yeah, because your average person yeah. really doesn't know the difference. Right. Mm -hmm. But when somebody tastes something that's really incredible, mm -hmm. they'll want to order it more. Yeah. So I, I urge the Bali High, you guys do an incredible job at everything. Let's get the cocktails back to, you know. I'm going to be visiting soon, so I yeah. I hope I get so something don't good. Don't disappoint Linda. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us once again on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. You can follow Miss Linda. Oh, yeah, my Instagram. On Instagram? <laughs> Linda JJ. All right, I think we're done. Okay. <laughs> now what do you want to do? I'm just enjoying my drink. All right. I would love to bring on my lovely guest, Miss Linda. What do you want me to call you? What's your favorite tiki bar that you've been to? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I know. Three dots and a dash in Ooh. Chicago. Yes. So I had a layover in Chicago when I was coming home from Pittsburgh, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was like, I have to go to Three Dots and Dash. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to my, my Tiki buddies and they were like, no dude, don't go to Three Dots and Dash. Go to, oh man, there's a vintage Tiki bar in Chicago. And they told me to go to that one. And it's filled with Whitco art. Hmm. The cocktails were horrible, but the beer was fine. And it was- And they sent you there? 
Yeah, well, so for me, the vintage stuff is more interesting. Okay, so you went to look at the, I, I do that, go for places yeah. just to look at the But Three Dots and a Dash has an incredible cocktail program. Mm -hmm. Great mugs. Like, oh, I love their mugs. I know, Yeah. It's super good, so, wow. And I, I wanna hear the craziest thing. Yeah. We just came across Three Dots and a Dash. We didn't even know it was there. We were in Chicago visiting my family. Mm -hmm. It was a really hot day and we were just like, I'm dying for just like an ice cold slushy or something. And we just like went on Yelp to see what was around us. And we saw, oh, three dots and a dash of tiki bar. What, let's go there. Yeah. So we went and it's literally like in an alley. It doesn't, it looks very unassuming. Mm -hmm. It's in an alleyway. And there's just this big, like, he looks like this big Samoan guy, like just in, <laughs> I was just like, this has to be it. Cause there's like tiki torches here and he's just standing there. Yeah. And it, it just seemed like a really cool speakeasy entrance. It, it delivered. And the drinks were incredible. Yes, it yeah. was It was just all around so cool. The atmosphere was amazing. I've heard nothing but good things about Three oh, Dots in a Dash. You have to go next time you're in Chicago. Tell me about the time that you went to the Trader Vic's in Atlanta. Oh, <laughs> that's not fair. I didn't go to the Trader Vic's in Atlanta. I went for work. We were doing prop stuff in Atlanta and it was literally right next door to the hotel that we were at. And we just got so tried sidetracked with the day that like the end of the day came and it was like, oh my God, we're so exhausted and we missed it. And I was right next to it and I didn't get to go. So that's always my heartbreak. So Atlanta, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And that's like one of the good Trader Vicks that's left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the decor is really good. And now I have to buy a book a whole nother flight. <laughs> you better do it before they're gone. Yeah. Linda. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank I'm you. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say now. Uh, can you get a lemon? <laughs> you want me to hold it? Yeah, and also like on the website, there's a counting, like a ca uh, counter, you know, counter. Oh, for, for, for how many drinks? For, for my, how many Mai Tais. Wow. At the airing of this, there were 2,704,371 Mai Tais sold. I like Mai Tais because you, it's one of those that you get to appreciate the rum. It's yeah. not too fruity, not too many juices. Yeah, it's like a super well-balanced drink. Mm -hmm. Put it back. Have you seen this show? I have. <laughs> I've just never been on it. <laughs> you see there's a mustache on there? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. What's, that if I had to go to one bar anywhere in the world, where would you send me? Oh, the, uh, the Mai Kai. The Mai, yeah, the Mai Kai in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, okay. I'll it's, go there. Well, you can't now because um, it's closed now because of it, a, a giant um, hole in the kitchen roof. Oh, okay. But the Mai Kai is like 10 times the size of Don the Beachcomber and Sunset Beach. Mm -hmm. More decor, better drinks. Mm -hmm. Like Yeah, I love the decor. It's all about the atmosphere and yeah. The Mai Kai is. Okay. Whew. But if it wasn't the Mai Kai, I don't, I don't know. The decor at the Trader Vic's in London is incredible. But then I love the San Francisco tiki bars too. I love the Tonga Room. I have not been. Can you believe it? I've been to San Francisco once and we didn't go to any tiki bars. It was kind of before oh, we were, wow. it was before we were like really cocktail enthusiasts. We went for St. Patrick's Day, that's what it was. So we're not gonna like do tiki on St. Patrick's yeah. Day. We were, we were there for the, the whiskey <laughs> and the Irish coffee. I could but, see that. But I do have to go back. Uh, what was it, the Tonga? The Tonga Room. The Tonga Room. That's yeah. the one that has the, the water yeah. inside. Yeah, there's oh. a swimming pool in there. Yeah, it gorgeous. rains, rains every half an hour. What? Or every 15 minutes, yeah. <gasps> that's yeah. some imagineering stuff. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> they did so many cool things back then. Yeah. Like just the theming and. Don the Beachcomber, I guess one of the one of his ploys to keep people into the in the bar mm -hmm. was at the end of the night he would turn this faucet on and it would it was like a uh, a hose that would rain down onto the roof of this wow. tin roof of oh, the to make it feel like of the Hollywood Don the Beachcomber mm -hmm. and then he would play a record that had like thunderstorm sounds on it and people would That's go awesome. oh I guess it's raining outside That's kind of like the Trader Sam's little trick that they do when you when you order the the stormy the dark and stormy or I forget the drink. And and if you're inside the Yeah, does the thing. The windows turn all stormy and you get mm -hmm. the thunder. I love that. We need to bring in some like good kitschy theming again. Like But it's all derivative. It's all derivative of uh, of uh, Dawn Beach. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. It's cool. It's all history. 
Mount. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> okay, but then. Oh. This is another vintage one. Half of his tux. This is the vintage one. Half of his. <laughs> Don't you start that. Um. What were we saying? I don't know. And yeah. appreciate. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you spit on me? No. No. Yeah. You did. <laughs> it was an accident. You didn't give me COVID. The like, almost. <laughs> oh. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you, you ever met uh, Walt Disney? Have I ever met Walt Disney? No. Was that a serious question? Yeah, no, I have a, I have a, uh, an Imagineer friend who was good friends with Walt Disney. I just thought oh. you guys all met him. No, he died in the 70s, right? Oh. Yeah, how old are you? <laughs> I was born in 90. Oh, okay. So, no. So you never met him? No, 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 no. Okay. How old do you think I am? I'm like 78. <gasps> <laughs> um, we should. I should do a sign off before we. Before we spill our drinks and I fall off the stage drunk. Is that what you're saying? Is that what's gonna happen? God willing. Oh my oh god. No. I gotta get some one shot and paint his eyes back. He looks. He, he looks like he's sleeping. I know a prop guy who can restore that. <laughs> do you? Yeah, we've got a few painters that I'm sure get no glazes and stuff. Oh well, I think this was all painted on top of the glaze. I think I think That's I just why I literally it would be falling yeah. off, yeah. So I think I literally just need some one shot. I can do it. Yeah. I do have a, a degree in art. Oh, oh yeah. I wanted to ask, what did you like? Like, how did you come to this? <laughs> Where this did you start not, from? This is not about me. Right. I'm I'm just a 70 year old Linda here, <laughs> chilling and drinking my Balearic. <laughs>